Hurricane Aaron, a historic and dangerous Atlantic storm. Expert forecast analysis. Good evening. As a meteorologist who has been tracking tropical cyclones for over a decade, I can tell you that the Atlantic Basin is now facing one of its most powerful and dangerous storms in recent memory. Hurricane Aaron has rapidly intensified into a Category 5 hurricane, the highest classification on the Saphir Simpson scale, and it has done so remarkably early in the season. Aaron is not just another hurricane, it has become a historic system. One that demands our full attention across the Caribbean, the United States, and even Atlantic Canada. Let's begin with the storm's current state. Satellite imagery shows an extraordinarily well-defined eye surrounded by dense, tightly wound bands of convection. Sustained winds have already surpassed 260 km per hour, 160 miles per hour, and central pressure has dropped to about 917 millibars, a level typical of the most catastrophic hurricanes in history. Such low pressure is a hallmark of intense storms. The tighter the pressure gradient, the stronger the winds. This explains why Aaron is capable of producing winds strong enough to topple trees, rip roofs from buildings, and render power grids inoperable. At present, Aaron is sweeping near the Leeward Islands and Virgin Islands, and it is closing in on Puerto Rico. Already, coastal stations are reporting dangerous surf and rip currents, while inland areas are experiencing heavy rainfall. In some locations, seas have reached heights of nearly 10 meters, 30 feet, an immense threat to maritime activity. These waves are not only battering the shoreline but also creating life-threatening conditions for anyone caught offshore. The impacts will not be confined to winds and waves alone, with rainfall totals expected to exceed 200 millimeters, 8 inches, in some areas. There is a serious risk of flash flooding, landslides, and mudslides especially in mountainous terrain. One aspect that makes Aaron particularly complex is that it is undergoing what meteorologists call an eyewall replacement cycle. In simple terms, the storm's inner eyewall collapses while a new, larger eyewall forms around it. During this process, intensity may temporarily dip, but the storm often expands in size, affecting a broader area. In Aaron's case, even if winds fluctuate slightly between Category 4 and 5, the overall destructive potential remains extremely high. And because the system is growing, more islands and coastal regions will be exposed to tropical storm force winds, storm surge, and heavy rain. So, where is Aaron heading next? Forecast models are in strong agreement that the hurricane will continue on a northwest track, passing near the Dominican Republic and Haiti then approaching the Bahamas. Steering currents are being shaped by a large high-pressure ridge over the central Atlantic and a deep trough of low pressure over northern Canada. Together, these atmospheric features are keeping Aaron from plowing straight into the U.S. mainland, for now. Instead, the storm is projected to run parallel to the U.S. east coast, from Florida northward through the Carolinas and possibly up toward Virginia. But here is where caution is essential. For storms of this intensity, small deviations in track can mean the difference between a glancing blow and a direct landfall. A jog of just 100 miles westward could place coastal communities under hurricane conditions. Conversely, a shift eastward would spare the coastline the worst winds but still leave it vulnerable to high surf, rip currents, and coastal flooding. That is why meteorologists repeatedly emphasize preparedness even when a direct strike is not guaranteed. Let's consider the impact outlook for the coming week. Caribbean islands including Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, Hispaniola, and the Bahamas will see the most immediate threats. Torrential rains, flash floods, and widespread power outages are expected. Mountainous terrain in Hispaniola is particularly vulnerable to mudslides. The southeastern U.S. coast, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina, faces a high likelihood of hazardous marine conditions. Even if Aaron remains offshore, storm surge and beach erosion could become severe, while outer rain bands may produce localized flooding and gusty winds. Farther north, Bermuda is already bracing for possible impacts, and Atlantic Canada, including Nova Scotia and Newfoundland, must also prepare, depending on the storm's eventual curve northeastward.
These regions could experience gale force winds, heavy rain, and coastal flooding by the time Aaron arrives in weakened but still dangerous form. From a historical standpoint, Aaron is extraordinary. To see a hurricane of this magnitude in mid August is rare. In fact, by central pressure and wind speed, Aaron ranks among the top five strongest hurricanes ever recorded before August 16th. That places it in truly elite company. The scientific community has been warning for years that warmer sea surface temperatures and changing climate patterns would fuel more intense storms. Aaron seems to embody this concern rapid intensification, immense strength, and earlier seasonal appearance than the long term average. And Aaron may not be the last. Looking eastward across the Atlantic, we already see tropical waves emerging from Africa's west coast, often called the hurricane nursery. Several of these waves show potential for development, meaning the 2025 season could remain highly active. Aaron is a stark reminder that we are only at the beginning of the peak season, which runs through September and October. So, what should residents do? The most important step is proactive preparation. Across Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, families should stock emergency kits, food, clean water, medicines, and fuel. Homes must be secured, loose outdoor items tied down, and evacuation plans ready. In the United States, coastal residents from Florida through the Carolinas should not assume safety simply because Aaron may remain offshore. History has shown that even close calls can bring devastating floods and coastal damage. Everyone should stay informed through official forecasts from the National Hurricane Center and local meteorological agencies. Governments and emergency services are already mobilizing. Shelters have been opened, relief teams put on standby, and airlines have begun canceling flights to the most threatened islands. Cruise operators have rerouted ships to safer waters. These measures highlight how seriously Aaron is being taken across the region. To sum up, Hurricane Aaron is not only the most formidable storm of 2025 so far, but also a case study in how extreme weather is evolving. Its strength, early timing, and broad footprint make it a historic system. The combination of destructive winds, torrential rains, massive waves, and an uncertain track demands caution from everyone in its potential path. For the Caribbean, Aaron's impacts are already being felt and will intensify in the days ahead. For the United States, the next week will be critical. Even if landfall is avoided, the eastern seaboard will endure dangerous surf, rip currents, and the possibility of flooding. And for Canada, particularly Atlantic provinces, vigilance is essential as Aaron could still deliver significant impacts as it curves northeast. Ladies and gentlemen, Hurricane Aaron is a reminder of nature's power and unpredictability. As meteorologists, our role is to provide clear information so communities can prepare, adapt, and ultimately stay safe. The story of Aaron is still unfolding, and much depends on how the storm interacts with the steering currents around it. But one thing is certain this is a storm that will be studied, remembered, and referenced for years to come. Stay alert, stay prepared, and most importantly, stay safe.